As a gamer, it's probably implied that you respect all the hours that Blizzard Entertainment has allowed us to waste through real-time strategy games and MMOs so popular that there are entire buildings in South Korea full of professional StarCraft players. A bizarre thought, but it's the truth. How did the company get its start? Humbly. Focused mostly on porting games for other studios as a third party, Blizzard's first hits were unforgettable classics like Battle Chess 2, Chinese Chess. It wasn't until the mid-90s that the company began to grow and focus on making their own strategy games. Part of every Blizzard fan's shelf should be made up of the Lost Viking series, a smart, immersive strategy gameplay experience that will have you hooked for hours. After the success of the first Lost Vikings, a second one was released for 16-bit systems called, appropriately enough, The Lost Vikings 2, and I'd like to thank Chip in Alabama for one of the better old-school strategy games out there. Also known by the 32-bit enhanced version as Norse by Norse West, Lost Vikings 2 follows the three comical Vikings Eric the Swift, Balog the Fierce, and Olaf the Stout, as they run, attack, and guard their way through time, again escaping to Mator's evil plan to use them as zoo animals. This time, they have acquired bionic powers that have enhanced their abilities that worked so well in the first adventure. I'm particularly impressed with Balog's skills. Along with a... lightsaber, he has a bionic arm that can both hit enemies from afar and grab things that are out of reach. Olaf is still a big fatso with a stupid grin on his face, but his abilities haven't lost any importance. Along with his shield that can be used as protection and even allow him to glide mid-air, his powerful farts can propel him across a chasm or even break down floors that block his path. Eric is still the most underrated, since he can't attack or defend, but is the only one that can breathe underwater, enabling him to swim and retrieve equipment unattainable by his cohorts, and his running and jumping skills make him the most mobile. Along for the ride are the werewolf Fang, who can jump from wall to wall, and the fire-breathing dragon Scorch, who can hover in mid-air. With five playable characters total, the game will switch up the trio, requiring you to work within those limits. This is an exceptional combination of platform and strategy elements, and there's no doubt that World of Warcraft or Diablo aren't the only addictive games that Blizzard has made. It's testament to the company's pedigree, and a reason why they have come this far in the industry today.